Hey guys, welcome back to the video. I haven't uploaded any videos in, on YouTube for a while, so I wanted to come back into the grind. <clears throat> but today I wanted to talk about just like the importance of um, it's like really understanding your root cause of the issues you have with um, not delaying gratification because obviously right now most people have trouble just um, just when there is some sort of uh, so if you want to mitigate your addiction in any sort of thing so when I when I was younger I would do, I would only associate addiction to substance abuses and um, addiction to nicotine like cigarettes and cigars and other uh, and obviously alcohol but as I'm getting older I'm realizing there's so many more addictions than just these um, so these stuff substances in society uh, come from like a very small village so when I was growing up obviously the only things I did see were these sort of substances but when, when you when you get older and you come into uh, more international societies when you come into diverse communities you you start you start to, and as you're getting older you start to feel there's a lot more addictions and even there's su there's such concepts as like food addiction where you're only eating because of the taste and you don't realize that you're full. So just problems like that. And obviously I'm not this guy that knows how to get rid of them, but I do have a couple of solutions and that I've learned from watching other videos and reading books. And yeah, so obviously that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I think that's also relevant for personal development and self-improvement. So hopefully you'll learn something from this video. So, what I've sort of learned so far to my limited understanding as of now is when you are when you are going through this um, process, when you're trying to so you're on this journey to get rid of some sort of addiction that you have, obviously everyone has addictions. And so we have all these issues. And so one cue so i guess a couple of important keywords that you have to understand is cue um, your reward like what you when you see some like your just imagine so scientifically there's so much more there's a, if you have a diagram and it explains you about how how the brain works when you see the substance that you have addiction for and so it's obviously a lot more easier to understand but i guess right now what you need to understand there's a hippocampus which is, uh, and then there's also the prefrontal cortex, and then, never mind, just understand it as if, I'm trying to say in a simple language, so understand it as if you are, so you see, so you, so you come into a room, and in that room, if that's the room where you have done most of your addiction habits, then that room is going to be a trigger for you. So every time you come into that room, you're going to feel that you're going to have all these biased thoughts in your mind and even though you think you can control it you cannot because you associate that room as doing what you regularly do for uh, for the addiction that you have so if you are smoking cigarettes in a particular room or if it's your balcony so each time you go out in your bal on your balcony you're going to suddenly remember to smoke like if it's like breathing for you there <clears throat> it's like going into a library and you open up a book because in the library it gives that presence even if you're not really a reader you still it, it just gives you cues to automatically open the book and read something so that's how architectures are built as if it's the presence and the environment that you do it's it's just what it's just what it's made for and so if you do your regular uh, addiction habits uh, in a particular environment, that environment is going to um, obviously make you want to do the thing that you do. Uh, these, so that's cue and reward. And obviously that is explained much better in Atomic Habits, which is a book that I read uh, a year ago, which is fantastic by James, uh, which is written by James Clear, and it's a fantastic book. So I recommend you read that. 
And then I guess um, it's good to read scientific books like that, but it's also, I think it's really important to sort of read uh, spiritual books as well to really understand how you could, I, what one thing that I'm realizing as I'm getting older is just simply knowing more, like knowing more about um, how your brain works and about just being more curious and just asking more questions and just learning more about these sorts of traits that you have that you don't like. It will just automatically, just knowing more will automatically help you to ease up into these um, paths of addiction. And obviously it's important. So anyways, uh, right now I'm reading this book called The Art of Happiness by His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. And it's, it's been wonderful because uh, there's a lot of scientific statistics and research and findings in this book as well as preaching about a lot of um, spiritual practices and just not spiritual practices but even findings in the spiritual scriptures and the findings in the scientific scriptures and how they connect and just simply by knowing these sorts of informations it helps you to have more thoughts of um mitigating or helping you to defend and get rid of those addictions so one of the crazy findings in the scientific world at least is how the age range of four to five children from the age range of four to five if they are not able to delay gratification at that age so i mean if you look if you take an example when i was a lot younger at around age age eight, four to five I would um, I used to love cars I used to love feeding um, food to animals I would actually <laughs> so my mom had a restaurant and I would steal eggs and other sort of uh, maybe breads and then I would just uh, throw it at stray dogs so that they could eat it as soon as possible and I would also steal milk and go outside my restaurant and <laughs> spray it on the floor so the dogs stray dogs could eat so anyways uh yeah so those sort of uh so that was a reward for me just feeding animals and obviously that's a good part obviously there's a lot of bad parts too but this is on internet so i wanted to say something good about myself <laughs> anyways so that's when um that's like the part where you are rewarded for what you do and and you chased that gratification so at that age range, if the kid is um, not able to delay gratification as long, so if I, if a mother comes up and offers a candy, and the kid does not delay gratification and instantly takes that candy and puts it in his mouth or her mouth, then like obviously he's sucking on it, and it's just he's already feeling that gratification. He's not able to delay it. So, anyways, this study was founded by I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, founded by Richard Davidson, <clears throat> I think a neuropsychologist. And he, yeah, and anyways, he found that out. And what happens is the kid gets older and older and older. And at the early 30s, the kid starts to um, show all these addictions that he had just because he was not able or she was not able to uh, delayed those gratifications when he was a young age. So it really does has association to when you were growing up as a young person and you get older and it just, these two are connected. And so obviously my age group and people who are, I mean, if you're older, if you're an adult now, you can't change the fact that you had all these addicts. Uh, you, you can't change the fact that you were not able to delay gratification uh, at a very young age but what you can do now is obviously understand that fact and just simply by knowing that fact actually helps you to do some other helps you to just realize that oh if just because of this I was not able to do that and I don't really know how to wrap my head around how to give you a step-by-step -step of um, how of not doing your addiction habits but that's i think that just understanding that fact maybe helps and i'm learning I'm, I'm learning more and more about just just to read 
is simply uh, more spiritual books. Obviously, I love scientific books as well, but that simple. So just learning more and just just learning more of addictions and just like knowing simple terms like uh, dopamine and what is ser serotonin and what is cues, what is rewards and what is memory. So there was this crazy diagram. Um, I'll try my best to explain it on the video, but oh, you know, I'm not sure if it'll give all the information in detail. So there's like a, cu a couple of bubbles and one bubble is memory. The other bubble is um, the other bubble is drive, and then another bubble is yeah, like salient, so the reward and importance, um, that reward bubble, and then the other bubbles I think um, just like initial thought. No, no, the other bubble is control, like how much are you able to control, and so like a person with addiction, his memory bubble is very big, his his um, his memory bubble is big, his drive bubble is big, and then, and then his control bubble is very small. And then for the non-addict person, for the non-addict person, the, the, the control bubble is big, the memory bubble is a little uh, it's big as well, because he has all the um, memories, uh, he has all the memories of saying no when, when he wants to say yes he's because he's delaying gratification and the drive bubble is a lot smaller so and that sort of helps you understand i guess about how does a addict brain look and how does a non-addict brain look and i'm not when i say addict i'm not talking about only with substance drugs and cigarettes and alcohol because these are the major issues but obviously there's so much more there's so many more addictions than that because if it was just those things then why are a lot of people suffering even though they don't do those um even if they don't have those addicts so yeah i guess that sort of helps around. just being more aware obviously helps and for me at least simply just by you know even i have addictions and i'm still facing them right now but just knowing more and more helps you a lot. And obviously you're on this. I simply like to just think of you as if you're born and you have a journey, you have this long journey up path ahead of you and you're just building yourself as you're getting older and older. And yeah, that helps a lot, obviously. So hopefully you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video.